Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video, I'm telling you guys about iCloud activation lock. I'm going to be showing you guys a few temporary bypasses for the latest iOS 9.3. And I'm going to be talking about some uh, full removal bypass methods that uh, work on some devices. And I'll go into that a little bit later. So this is pretty much going to be everything you'd ever need to know on iCloud activation lock. So before we get started, I want to quickly talk about the comments uh, of my previous iCloud videos. Now, in the comments of this video, there is definitely going to be some scammers. And what I mean by scammers and how to find them is, well, this is one of my old videos about iCloud activation. If we go down into the comments, you will see there's going to be quite a few comments, such as this one right here, where they're posting fake links. Now, anything that is saying it's an iCloud bypass link, do not click the link because it's either a survey, a virus, basically something that's not going to work. There's no way they can actually give you an iCloud bypass. So do not trust any comments in this video that are saying they can give you an iCloud bypass. There's another one right here. Uh, there's another one right here. Most of these are actually just bots that go around posting these comments on every video that's got iCloud in the name or something like that. So do not trust any comments posted in this video saying they have an iCloud activation unlock. Anyway, to start off this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the DNS server bypass. This works on 9.3. It actually works on anything, uh, any version that has an iCloud activation lock. So all the way from iOS 7.0 to up to 9.3. So my device is right here. We're going to need to use one of these DNS servers. Now I'll leave these in the description. So mine, I'm in Europe, so I'll use this one. So on the device that's iCloud locked, you want to press the home button. You want to go to your Wi-Fi settings. Now if you're already at the start, then just go through the process until you get to Wi-Fi settings. Now you'll see I've already actually set this up, but what we're going to do is we're going to forget my network. And we're going to set this up as though I haven't actually done anything yet, so let's go all the way back. So when you get to the screen, you're just going to go English, whatever country, and then your network that you want to join, you want to click on the little I. If you don't see the I, click the home button, and then click on more Wi-Fi settings. So we're going to click on the I. I'm going to go down to DNS. And you're going to type in the DNS that matches your location. So for Europe, it's 104.155.28.90. So once that's in, just hit return, go back, and you can now enter your password for your network. So when we hit join, the this screen will go away, wait for a couple of seconds, and you want to hit back as soon as it starts trying to activate. And we're going to see this little pop-up. Now this is the captive portal bypass. So if I just take this off here. As you can see, we are on a server which gives us access to many features of the device right within this web view right here. So if we go to menu, as you can see, we've got a lot of options, a lot of things to do. Now if you've seen my other iCloud videos, this is the exact same thing. This method has not been patched uh, and it's not, really, it's not really easy for Apple to actually patch this. So I doubt this will ever go away. But um, right at the top here, we have some chat rooms. This is basically where you can chat to other people who are iCloud locked. So there's some different languages you can chat in. And uh, if we go in English, as you can see, here's some people who are iCloud locked. Tells you their version, and uh, you can help each other out in there. Uh, we have Flashlight, which I don't believe actually works anymore. Let's quickly try this. You're meant to take a photo or video, but I doubt, I don't think this actually works within the web view anymore. No, so you just get a blank, uh... Yeah, so the flash doesn't work anymore, but that was an old feature from before. But, um, there is some useful stuff in here, so... If we go down to social, if it stops freezing... Sorry about that, there was a little bit of a freeze there, but uh, if we go into the social section... You can see here we have access to many different social networks. So it's obviously only the web-based version because it's all done through this uh, this web view here. But uh, we can go into Twitter and it will let you log in. And you just click this back button to get back out to the home page. So uh, you can access all your favorite social medias in there. You can even just browse to any website with this internet button here. You can go to an address bar and search for anything. So um, it lets you have full web access, pretty cool. You can access mail, maps, even SMS. Uh, Interesting, I haven't really explored this, uh, also Wikipedia and stuff like that. Uh, and then near the bottom we have some more interesting stuff. Now applications is full of uh, games and many useful things. Actually the games are not in here I don't think. But So we have some like things like Dropbox right at the top, uh, Google Translate, some note stuff, calculator. 
And down here we have some crashes. Now, this sort of moves me on to my next part of this video, crashing out of setup.app. So for those of you who don't really know too much technical information about iOS, the, uh, the, the app that we're in right now is called Setup, and it's basically the app that's preventing us from actually getting into the phone. So um, these links right here are designed to crash you out of it. Now, the latest 9.3, there isn't one for that. Uh, I haven't actually tried this one. This is just a temporary crash, I think. It links you to a YouTube video to teach you. If you have a, uh, an older device, though, as you can see right there, there was some for iOS 7. So you guys could check those out. So we got right here, Crash 1, iOS 7 only. Uh, there is some for 8.0 to 8.3. Haven't really checked out his HTTPS bypass yet, but uh, just seems to give you an error when trying to open it. But that is, uh, that's a new one, definitely. But um, anyway, so that's the application section. If we go back again, we can go down to games. Now here, these are all those web-based games, but they're sort of clones of iOS games. So you can see we've got Flappy Bird right here. And I do demo this in each of my iCloud videos, so you might have seen this before. Uh, fortunately, it does have ads, but it does let you play Flappy Bird within the browser. So, skip ad, start. As you can see, it's pretty responsive. And, uh, yeah, so you guys can play some games if you are bored. Um, but, yeah, so have a look around in this uh, server. It's quite interesting. But, um, and right at the bottom we have some settings so you can change the language and uh, about this device. Now I'm running 9.2.1 but this does work on 9.3 as I said. The reason I'm not showing on 9.3 is because of the bugs with the latest 9.3 builds. Apple actually stopped uh, releasing those builds. So I can't actually update to 9.3 to show you guys that but uh, I guarantee you guys it does work. I've tried it on the betas already so uh, it will definitely work on the full version of 9.3. So guys, that is the DNS server. Uh, if you want to follow the guy on Twitter, that's his Twitter right there. But uh, yeah, anyway, let's get on with the next part of this video. Alright, so the next part of this video, I'm going to be showing you guys a couple glitches that allow you to go onto the home screen for a little while. And uh, if you're lucky, you may even be able to stay there for a couple minutes. I've done that in the past. But uh, anyway, the first glitch, credit goes to Everything Apple Pro for posting about this. Although I don't think he's the original finder of it. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So... Go back to the home screen on uh, setup app, so the language setup, and then you want to choose your language, so English, and then you want to, you're going to enter the voiceover mode by pressing the home button three times. Voiceover on. And then you'll hear setup. the voice. Back button. And now you want to click on a lang or sorry, a region that you haven't uh, already been set up into. So I've already chosen the United Kingdom. You want to choose a different one. So Albania. let's go for this one. Button. And you're going to double click it and then you're going to hold the power on home button uh, for as long as it takes until the device reboots. So, And you hear the voice gets cut off there and it's going to reboot. And now once it's reboot, you will actually get a couple of seconds of seeing the home screen. So I'm just going to speed this part up and you'll, you'll let you guys see the home screen. Alright, so there we are. We can see the home screen. It's sort of frozen, so you can't really do much on it. And it does kick you straight back into setup.app. But uh, if you guys have a play around with that, you may actually be able to interact with it Next, and stay on there longer. So that is the first glitch. Alright, so the second glitch of the two is the more effective one. This is the one that actually allowed me to go onto the home screen for about two minutes before I got jumped back into setup.app. So to do this one, you want to go to the Wi-Fi settings page, and you want to basically find a place that you can enter characters on, on the keyboard. So this could be either on choose another network, there's a, there's a text field right here, or it could be in the uh, the DNS area. So if you go down to here, actually, if you go into HTTP proxy, if you go into manual, you can type stuff in here. So what we basically want to do is fill it up with emojis. Now, I mean a lot of emojis, so this does take a little while to do. So I'll speed this bit up and... Uh, I actually might cut it and I'll, I'll, have, I'll show you guys when I've got a lot of emojis in here. Alright, so there's probably about 20 to 30,000 emojis in there now. I've been doing that for quite a little while and uh, I've been copying and pasting a big chunk of them. So as you can see right now, it's sort of frozen. Um, and when it does that, you want to find a period when it freezes for quite a long time. And uh, this is how you're going to crash the setup app. So once it has frozen like this, 
it can freeze at any moment, it doesn't have to be when you're selecting it, but um, we're going to hold the power button until the, low power, until the slide to power off comes up, click cancel and then keep tapping the screen rapidly, and uh, if you're lucky you will crash, and if you're even luckier you'll be able to stay on the springboard for a little while, so I'm going to keep doing this. It doesn't work every time, but uh, I'll try it again if it doesn't, as you can see there. So I uh, had it for a brief second, now I have done it for two minutes in the past, so keep playing around with that. The more you lag it out, the longer it's going to take for the device to actually kick it back into setup.app. But uh, yeah, so those are two glitches that allow you to briefly get onto the home screen. So for the last part of this video, I'm going to be talking about the methods for fully bypassing full removal of iCloud activation. So there are only actually three methods of doing this. Uh, three real methods. Now you'll see a lot of scams out there claiming they can do it, but I guarantee you they're all fake. But uh, there are three real methods of doing it. Now the first one applies to only the iPhone 4. And the reason for that is it requires a boot ROM exploit. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's basically the lowest level exploit on a device you can have. And it's in the hardware, meaning Apple cannot patch it for a software update. So they have to actually release a new phone to be able to patch the exploit. So the iPhone 4 is going to be always um, bypassable because it's got this exploit. So you can always bypass your iPhone 4 no matter what version it's on. Now, if you want a video tutorial on this, I actually made one a little while ago, so it's right here. I'll leave a link in the description. Full access iCloud activation. So this actually gets you onto the phone, completely pass, uh, bypasses the iCloud activation, and you can use the phone pretty much like normal. So the way it works is you basically load a custom RAM disk, uh, an SSH RAM disk, which gives you access to the root file system while the phone is in recovery mode. So this allows you to edit the file system of the phone. And through that, you can delete the setup app, the app that we're in right now that's stopping us from getting into the phone. Once you've deleted that, you reboot the phone and the phone has no choice but to go onto the home screen because there's no setup.app to load. So there you bypass iCloud activation. So go ahead and watch this video. It is about 20 minutes because there's a lot to do. Not as simple as what I just said. There is quite a lot of uh, stuff you need to do on this, but uh, yeah, that is the first full method. Of so the second method of fully bypassing iCloud is the custom firmware method. Now, this basically requires you to build a custom IPSW file that doesn't include the setup app, and then you're going to restore your device to the IPSW. And uh, once again, like in the other method I just mentioned, the iPhone will have no choice but to boot you onto the springboard because there's no setup to app for it to open. So, this one, it requires uh, a few things. It requires, first of all, a 32-bit device. Uh, so no 64-bit devices are compatible with this method. Uh, it requires keys for that device. Now, if you don't know what keys are, I'll leave a little link in the description talking about those. Uh, they, they basically allow you to decrypt firmwares um, in IPSW files. So it's required you need to decrypt the, for, uh, the root file system inside the IPSW, otherwise you won't be able to edit it. And it also requires you to have an iBoot or a boot ROM exploit to restore. So just like I said before with the iPhone 4 method, you will need a boot ROM or iBoot exploit. So unless another one of these comes public, you will not be able to fully bypass using the custom firmware method on anything above the iPhone 4. But we may be seeing uh, an iBoot exploit soon, you never know, or another boot ROM exploit. It has been about four years, I think, before the Lime Rain exploit. But um, yeah, I'll leave some more information about the custom firmware method in the description if you want to read up on that. And the final method is hardware unlocks. So this is probably the most inconvenient way of unlocking your iCloud um, because number one, it involves a second device. Now you need, if you've got an iCloud locked iPhone, you need a duplicate version of that iPhone that's not iCloud locked to be able to do this. So not a lot of people are going to have that. Um, second of all, it is quite dangerous obviously because it involves taking apart the phone and actually replacing certain chips inside with chips from the other phone that's not iCloud locked as you can see from this video right here on YouTube it tells you how to do it now I'm not actually completely sure how reliable these videos are because this is the only method I've not actually tried um, and I may I may try it in the future if I get an iCloud locked device but um, yeah so I haven't actually tried this one so do this one at your own risk but um, you can read, there's quite a lot of uh, videos about this on, on here actually, but uh, yeah, so you will need a second device, which is definitely not going to be very convenient because it's going to cost you double the price, and uh, well, I suppose you could use a damaged phone, but uh, yeah, so those are the three ways of fully removing iCloud.
So I just realized I didn't really explain what an iBoot exploit is. Uh, and an iBoot exploit is basically as powerful as a boot ROM exploit, but it's not in the hardware, meaning it can be patched if Apple finds it. So it can be patched in a, in a software update. Um, but this can still be used for uh, restoring the custom firmwares. So you can bypass iCloud this way, although there's no current uh, public iBoot exploit. So uh, this guy right here, I hate snow. Some of you may have heard of him. Uh, if you're new to iOS stuff, then you probably wouldn't have. But he has a, an iBoot exploit for A5 and A6 devices, meaning that he can unlock uh, iCloud, uh, but he won't do it for you. He, he's keeping his exploit safe because Apple uh, will find it if he shares it with anyone and they will patch it. Um, but yeah, so you guys can research into iBoot exploits. I'll leave a link in the description to a link uh, uh, to a page on the iPhone wiki.com. Uh, now I'll explain that quite well. All right, so that is all the information you guys pretty much need to know about iCloud activation unlocks. Uh, to sum it up quickly, uh, iPhone 4s, you can unlock them, fully bypass them no matter what version they're on. So watch my video on that. If you want anything above an iPhone 4, you're going to need to either wait for a public iBoot slash boot ROM exploit to be released, and then you'll be able to use the same methods as on the iPhone 4 to bypass it, or you're going to have to keep looking for glitches in order to crash to the springboard. So, uh, yeah. So before I end this video, I wanted to briefly talk about scammers. Now, I did mention scammers in the starters video. Comment scammers on my YouTube videos. Once again, do not fall for those in the comments of this video. But uh, there are scammers everywhere. So, for example, this guy on Twitter. Uh, you will see many accounts like this, and you'll see them on YouTube as well, saying that they have iCloud. They've taken the iCloud off of these people's Apple, uh, these people's iPhones, and you see pretty much loads of different screenshots with these uh, activation lock off. Uh, these, I can guarantee you, they're all 100% fake. Uh, they either use bots to reply, or they make second accounts to like reply to themselves saying that uh, it worked. But uh, do not trust anyone on Twitter who says they can unlock iCloud uh, for full removal, because the majority of them will ask you to pay. And I was actually talking to a scammer the other day. He was expecting me to pay $50 to unlock one device from the iCloud activation. So do not fall for these guys. Um, and as I said, there's a lot of these guys out here, so just stay away from them. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Please subscribe for more, and I will see you next time.